The doormats that you need for sublimation are at your local Home Depot. These are 100% polyester doormats. They have a different variety of styles and sizes, so be sure to check those all out. Today, the doormat that we're going to be using is the light gray one. It's an 18 by 30 inch size. It's $12.98. They also have the brown doormats. I make these as well. So check out the videos on my channel. So let's get into the video. Okay, first things first, getting started. I'm going to be working from Silhouette Studio. This is a free app. It's free to download. And I print out all of my sublimation prints from this app. It's easy to use. And I'm going to show you exactly how I use it, creating this Halloween doormat today. I'm making a Halloween doormat today, so I've already downloaded the PNG from Etsy. You want to click the folder at the top. This is your file to open up your photos. And I'm just going to find the file that I downloaded, and it's a pumpkin slash skeleton or whatever. So I'm going to resize it to a 3.5 by 3.5 up here at the top where you see W for width and H for height. I'm going to do a 3.5 by 3.5. So because I made the pumpkin smaller and it was actually really large, it's not on my canvas. So if you click the center button here, it'll bring it onto your canvas. And I'm gonna add about four of these on my page because I'm gonna put welcome on the center of the doormat and surrounded by the word welcome, it's gonna be a bunch of pumpkins. So I was able to fit about four of these pumpkins on a page. Next, I'm gonna go up to the top and click print. Once you get the pop-up of your printout preview, click print again. Choose your sublimation printer and double check your preferences to make sure everything is selected correctly. I always double check to make sure that my image will be mirrored and then I mash OK. And then I'm going to do about four copies so I have enough pumpkins. I may not need all four, I don't know, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to print out four. And this is my sublimation printer printing out. It's the Ipsen Eco Tank, and this is a converted sublimation printer. There is also a video on my channel showing you how to convert an Ipsen. Next, we're going to go back to Silhouette Studio and we're going to click a new page up on the left hand side. We're going to click the letter A over on the left and type out the word welcome. You want to highlight the entire word and go over to the right side where do you see the paint palette and we're going to change the color of the word to black. Keeping the word highlighted, you can also come over to the right and click the letter A, and this is your font. I'm going to change the font to Bloody Office. This font is not included in this app. This is a font that I downloaded for free from thefont.com. If you do not know how to download free fonts to your computer, I have a video also on my channel showing you how to download free fonts. I'm going to link that down in the description box as well. Now I'm just gonna drag the word welcome out until I can get it to a size five by 15 or about a size five by 15. What you need to understand is in the center of the mat, you have about a 12 by 24 inch space to sublimate on. So we, when you, whenever you're making these mats, you wanna make sure you stay within the, that size range of 12 by 24. So I'm gonna make the word welcome a five by 15, which is actually kind of small, but we're gonna put pumpkins around it so it'll work out. Also understand that I have a small format sublimation printer, which only prints 8.5 by 11. So we're gonna have to use this cutting tool here. We're gonna take the cutting tool and slice down between the C. Drag the knife back and forth until the number hits zero. This means you have a straight line. Let the cutting tool go on your mouse and it should cut. You will see a red line between the C where it cut. Then you want to go back over to the left and grab your cursor. You want to highlight everything behind that red line. Once you have everything highlighted, you want to go up to the top and click group. You're going to do the same thing with everything in front of that red line. You want to highlight the W, the E, the L, and that first half of the C, and then you want to group that as well. And then we're going to squeeze both of these onto one page, which is going to be one print. Again, because our sublimation printer only prints 8.5 by 11. So this is how we're going to be able to print a 5 by 15 word welcome. We have to split it up. 
Therefore, once it prints, we can cut it and kind of place it together, put it together like a puzzle by connecting the C's. I know it sounds kind of confusing, but it'll make sense once you see me do it. Click print. Again, your preferences should be the same from your last print, so we're not going to check that again. We only need one copy, and then we're going to print. So now we have all of our printouts. We have our four pages of pumpkins and we have our welcome. You wanna cut between the two words. And then you wanna cut the white off one side where the C was trimmed at, where the C was cut at. You wanna cut one side, leaving no white. You wanna cut directly on the seam, if that makes sense, and then place it together like a puzzle. You want to get just few little pieces of your heat tape and kind of put those, you know, where it would connect the papers, tape the papers together right on that seam, but not on your ink. You don't want it on your ink. Flip it over and then put tape on that back seam and everything should be one whole piece. I'm going to trim the sides and then trim around the actual welcome just so it's not so much paper um, left around the word. Now that we have our welcome cut out, now it's time to cut out the pumpkins. I have four pages of pumpkins with four pumpkins on each page. I may not need all of them, but it's better to have more than not to have enough. So you just want to cut your pumpkins out in a circle like I'm doing here. Once you have everything cut out, your next thing would be to lay everything onto your mat face down and tape it down. So I got my welcome center and I'm using heat tape to tape that down. Um, I actually used a lot of tape. You don't have to use this much tape. I kind of overdid it. Don't know why, but I did, but it's fine. It won't hurt anything. Take the pumpkins, lay your pumpkins kind of around the mat. There's no particular way. Just fit as many as you can on there. Try not to overlay your images. Because once you press and you messed up, you can't go back and fix it. Make sure you're using heat tape as well. Next, you want to take your heat press, set it at 395. I'm using a handheld heat press. Now, you can use a big heat press if you want. I think the handheld is better. I'm at 395 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 seconds. It takes longer like this, but I'd rather do it this way than to be working up under a hot plate on a heat press. You want to peel your images back and see if the ink was transferred all the way. And if so, you can remove your sublimation paper. And I'm going to do this all the way around the mat for each pumpkin. Always lift your paper up and check your images just to make sure, again, the ink has transferred. For the welcome, I'm going to be using parchment paper because... I don't want to put direct heat on my pumpkins, which I've already removed the sublimation paper from. And the same thing with the welcome. I'm at 395 for 60 seconds. As you can see at the top of this, some of the ink didn't transfer at the top. So I'm gonna have to go over and heat that again for another 60 seconds. This is time consuming, but I feel like this is a lot easier than working under a big hot heat press. And I find this more, I feel like the results are better when you're using a handheld versus a big huge heat press. That's just my opinion. In real time, this doormat probably took me about 15 minutes to actually go around the entire thing at 60 seconds per press. Again, I have a small heat press, so I have to do section by section by section. But I think the results are worth it. The colors are vibrant. There is no ghosting. Everything is nice, colorful, and bold. I think this doormat turned out very nice. So if you want to see more sublimation doormats, let me know down in the comments. Or if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. These doormats do last a long time. 
They don't fade. They don't shed like the other style Dora mats. They can get wet. And um, the cleanup is easy. These are more last longing than the other style Dora mats. And they're really easy to make once you start making them. So I hope I explained everything. Um, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I will try to answer them. And that's all for this video, y'all. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And follow me on my other socials.